Hey everyone, it's Daphne and today we're going to get started on Oriental Garden and I've got page one pretty much prepped. You're going to need a couple of things. One, if you want to do um, the die cuts um, as I had shown you in a previous video, you'll need your die cuts. Um, have those handy. You're going to need your art glitter glue, some tape. We will be applying magnets in this series of videos. Something to write with, a bone folder, scissors, and of course some ink. <clears throat> So you can ink your edges. So this is a pocket. Um, this is a six by eight pocket that's gonna go into the album, which we created in the last video, but I haven't installed these yet. I'm actually gonna do all my work outside the album for a change. I'm gonna try that and see how that goes. Okay, so with that, let's get started. So here are all the bits that I've um, trimmed out already and got ready for the pocket or page. <clears throat> So I'm gonna lay this out so you have some expectation of what we're doing. This is um, what looks like a very wide belly band. And um, what I've done is I've die cut on either side. So this paper started out as seven by seven. I scored a half inch on either side. So now this is six inches across top to bottom. And then I die cut both sides. This is gonna, this is gonna lay down centered on the page. And then I'm actually gonna run a bead of glue through the center and these are gonna become pockets. Um, and I didn't want it to pass through like a belly button, I want a belly band, I wanted um, two different pockets. So that's how I've designed that. So again, this is our six by eight finished pocket page. Our first design feature is going to be seven by seven. You're gonna score a half inch on either side. And since it's square, it doesn't matter which sides. And then you're gonna die cut um, the two open ends, or you can leave it plain if you don't want to use your die cuts. It looks just as beautiful with or without the die cuts. It'll still function the same. All right, so now that we've got that established, I'm going to get some tape on this and get this laid down. So we basically just want to center this feature on the pocket page. So I'm going to take a look at this real quick, try to figure out where it's going to go. Get my pick tool and get ready. So if you have not used your die cut, this is seven inches, the pocket page is eight inches. So you'll have a half inch uh, on either side. If you've die cut, it'll be a little bit more because it did take a little off the edges here. And then I didn't. I went over this very, very quickly, but I'll show you. This is the packs. It's Spellbinders S5202. And then in that, as this is the die that I used. So I turned, I inverted it and placed it on either end and used that. Okay. going to try to get on top of this without you guys seeing the top of my head, which <laughs> is going to be a little bit of a challenge, I think. And I am going to use my grid. Okay, so there's my halfway point because I can see the grid here. This helps me make it more even. And that looks... looks right. Okay, now before I glue down, or before I tape down the other side, I'm going to run a bead of glue right across the center and then fold it over. And that'll just keep whatever's in the pocket from sliding across to the other side. If you don't like that, you can just make it a belly band and glue the other side down. And I'm just eyeballing this. There we go. And I'm steering clear of the uh, hinge area itself. 
Okay, now I'm going to fold it over, turn it around, tuck my edges in. Okay, there we go. That actually didn't go in straight. I want to lift that. Push that down a little. Okay. So I'm going to press the center to hold, get it to hold. All right, so that should do. In a few minutes, it should be dry, and we should have a shallow pocket, like so. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, and we're going to, like, this one, like I said, is going to be different. I'm going to do um, the interactive components plus the designer papers at the same time. I don't usually do that, um, but because of all the die cutting, I found that I was just, it was getting too hard to keep track of the papers. Okay, so the next thing is going to be the pocket liner. And um, this is the paper that I've chosen. And if you're if you're using the Oriental Garden, um, this is actually off the 12 by 12. There's two strips um, on one of the design pages, and this is just that the width of that strip. And it just really needs to be um, uh, just under two inches wide if you're going to die cut. If you're not going to die cut. Um, this is seven inches, this is eight inches, so it really only needs to be about three quarters of an inch on either side, just so it's slightly inside the pocket. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get this down. And the way I've designed this is this little piece trim that I'm putting in now is actually gonna slide into the pocket. Um, so there's two ways to do that. There's what I'm doing right now, and the other way is to leave the tab of the pocket open and put it behind the tab and then press the tab down. Uh, I, I don't. I prefer this because I think make, it makes sliding whatever's in the pocket easier. Harder to get in, but I think in the end it, it's a better result. It's not quite straight. Hmm. <laughs> I'm having some trouble. I think I need some more glue. It's quite warm and dry. Um, so my glue did not stay slippery very long. Something to consider when you're working on it. The temperature definitely makes a big difference. <laughs> I'm all thumbs this morning. I'm going to try to get one corner in right and then move the other. There. There we go. That's in. All right, so that's just the pocket liner. Later we'll have something actually in the pocket here. Okay, now we're going to flip it over and do the same thing. And I'm going to try to get enough glue on it this time that I don't have to pull it back out. It should have enough glue that it'll kind of glide in. some excess glue. I'm just going to rub that off. And of course this is our glitter glue so it will dry clear and matte. All right so those two liners are in. It's already starting to take some shape. Um, sorry I had some tape on me. Okay so these are the two pieces that I've trimmed out for here and right here um, I'm not covering the whole panel. You can if you want um, but I'm actually going to put a design feature on top. There's going to be two flaps that open out um, here so you can either put a solid piece here but it's going to get covered um, and the reason I'm doing it this way is I'm going to have these two flaps sit across the top. They're going to open to the left and to the right and then there'll be a design piece in here um, and I don't want these hinges to show 
So I'm gonna lay a, a third piece in the center. So it, you can either have one piece and show your hinges, or you can do what I'm doing and just use a one inch or a two inch strip, trim it down, lay these down, and then put another designer piece in the middle, which is what my plan is right now. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get these two pieces in because everything is gonna lay on top of them. So if you're a subscriber, hopefully you're leveraging our um, playlist and for the playlist for Oriental Garden, there is a tutorial on how to use the dies uh, to make your, your border trims. So please refer to that. It's also going to be located in the tips, tools, and techniques. Um, but since I'm actually using it on this album, it'll be part of this playlist. So make sure you're, you're looking at the playlist. It'll be in there. And it's uh, the title is um, Border Cut or die cut borders. I think I think that's the title. Whatever it is, it's very self-explanatory. about that guys so this is page one like I said that's what we're working on okay now we need to locate these two flaps and um, these two so everything else I've placed here is just uh, designer paper right so these were about two inches wide this is just under two inches wide and then the the uh, pocket this belly band pocket is seven by seven these two flaps are four and a half by six um, and it's scored at half an inch, so it's a finished four by six panel, and they are going to um, open away from each other. So I'm just looking to center these on the top like so. So I think I'm going to use a little reference line so I can get my pocket in, or get my flap in. once I pull these away. Okay, so I just drew a quick line and I'm gonna place this flap here and then the opposing one. I will close it and make sure it fits tightly and then lay it down. There's a little excess glue here. Sorry, I'm fussing, but I don't want it under my tape. There we go. All right, it's very faint, but there is a line here that I'm following. I'm gonna turn it side to side so I can see all the way across from top to bottom. I'm not happy with that. And here's why. Uh, it was coming off the top here. So I wanna make sure it's flush on both sides as well as hit the line. I've got so much glue on me, it's just dropping everywhere. Hang on. Okay, get some of that off. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna look side to side and top to bottom. There we go, so that's in. So you can see um, there's a hinge here and I wanna make sure I cover it. So I'm gonna come in with another piece of paper and cover that after I put in this flap. Okay, and so on this flap, I'm gonna have it be the top. So I wanna make sure that it closes all the way. So I am resting the hinge on the open flap and I'm going to find my placement that way rather than having to draw a reference line. And there we go. So there it is. 
Okay, now I need to trim out a piece of paper to go in the center here. Actually, trying to see if it, yeah, it actually operates both ways. But I'm gonna have it open this way. So this is gonna be my cover. So let's go ahead and get that on. And I think I wanna do it this way. Yep, okay. So you guys, give me some feedback on this process, doing the start to finish rather than doing the whole base album, then the custom flaps, and then the uh, and then the decorator stuff. I'm just kind of curious. Um, it's it's a different process for me. I usually wind up cutting all my paper in advance because I want to see that I've got the patterns kind of distributed through the album, and uh, so. I really do have to cut ahead anyway, so both processes work for me. I'm just kind of curious what you guys think. All right, now let's get the inside covers. I've got these pages already identified, and here they are, and I think they're trimmed out just right too. And it looks, looks good, yeah. So I can get these down right away. dry fit first. Looks good. can see I've got these hinges exposed and then still some blank paper here so this is my plan for the center and it looks like I need to trim this down just a smidge and I'm just lining it up to the panel here to see what the difference is and it looks like about a sixteenth of an inch needs to come off and the reason I'm trimming it is because I want to see this continuous line all the way across I think that goes a long way to really improving the overall quality of your, your album. I want to make sure my panels are going to close freely, and they do. This is going to be the cover, so I'm going to place my magnet underneath that. And I need a minute to open my magnets. Okay, so these are the um, basic gray magnets. Come on, <laughs> you're not coming out. There we go. All right, there's one. So I'm going to place this on here and I'm going to place it on the far side because I want this to hold down on this side. 
I'm going to glue all this down and then I'll find my mate in here. So this was my plan to use this design feature anyway, but I mean, this is a great way to hide a magnet if you forget it. Um, so I'm trying to decide where do I want this. I think I do want it relatively centered. All right, so that's in there. So now we need to find Things are so strong. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to press that into place. There we go. Add some tape and then get that covered. Okay, there we go. And then this is the piece that's going to go here. So I want to cover my magnet. Just softens the edges. <clears throat> We're almost done with page one. to dry fit it um, but I'm pretty sure I, yeah I'm, sorry, I'm pretty sure I trimmed it out last night there we go so now it's all neat and closed in place opens to the left right there's our center and then we have two pockets and I think yeah I've got some fussy cut or um, cut aparts here and um, I'll probably mat these and these will go in the pocket and I'm pushing against the edge now and that's where that glue line is so they don't they won't get lost um, but we'll have a card on either side and then that oops that is uh, page one with our two little pockets so I'm gonna flip it over and try to keep in mind the top versus the bottom since it's not in a book it's a little harder and then we're gonna start on page two but for now I'm gonna take a break I'm gonna upload what I have and I'll be back later Okay, let's go ahead and get started on page two. So we've got a couple of design features here that are pretty interesting. One of them is going to be this side tuck spot. And this piece of paper started out as four and a half by five. So it's four and a half by five inches tall. Did I get that right? Five inches or five and a half? Yeah. So four and a half by five inches. You're going to score a half inch along the four and a half inch side and then you're going to score another half inch on the on the um, 90 degree angle so you wind up with a finished um, pocket or tuck space of four by five and i'm just verifying that i'm sorry not four by five four by four and a half four by four and a half because we've done a score line down across the bottom so go, you don't have to do the die cut if you don't want. It's still, the whole thing will function if you don't, but you will need a diagonal, and you'll see why in a few minutes. Um, so if you just cut a rectangle and then cut across from the five inch to the four inch, that'll be fine, or this is how you would place your um, 
uh, die across the 4x5. So what I had done in the 4x5 um, is I just went from one corner to the other. And part of the reason that the design element is the size it is is because that's the size of the die. So I just did a, a diagonal from one side to the other, and I did it twice. I did it once for the left and once for the right. There is a separate tutorial that shows you how to place uh, the die and along with your paper to get the correct cutting. Um, so I'm gonna refer you back to that because I'm not gonna go over that for each element. It'll take too long in this tutorial. So like I said, you can either cut a straight diagonal or you can use your die here. So I'm gonna set those aside. There's our base, then we're gonna have a left and right flap. Now, now I'm back to where I need to be. These elements get applied to the left and right flap. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this here so you can see the contrast, like so. And then these doors that they're mounted on are gonna stay closed by inserting something into these two flaps. So that's what we're doing. Okay, now that I've got that figured out again, these two flaps are four and a half by six. So that's four and a half by six. You're gonna score a half inch on both sides. You need two of those, one for the left and one for the right. Sorry, can't get my tape laid down. There we go. That's one and two. I'm just going to reaffirm, reaffirm the orientation of page one. Okay, so these are just going to get attached to the very outside edge of page two. Like so. There we go. actually a little bit askew so I'm gonna lift that real quick maybe maybe it looks like I didn't get it in quite straight and I'm only able to do this because I didn't burnish it okay there we go I'm gonna try that one more time and what I wasn't doing is I wasn't really looking down the sides like I should have been. I was just looking at the one corner. So we're going to reapply that. And I'm going to make sure it's flush on the sides as well as tight to the corner. Much better result. There we go. So there we go. So those look good. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply these. And I need to trim that out just a little bit. So I just mitered the corner here. There we go. I'm gonna add these two to the outside of these two flaps. And again, you don't have to um, you don't have to use your die cut. Just a diagonal cut will also work. I know not everybody wants to deal with dies. Not everybody has dies, so you don't have to. It's just ornamental. I'm just making sure I've got the right on the right and the left on the left. So again, before I put anything down, I'm going to verify the orientation of my page, and it's a good thing I did because I would have put these on the bottom. So actually, this is the bottom. 
So be sure you're constantly checking that. Um, otherwise, you, I could have glued these to the wrong end. Okay, that looks right. So I'm just, so this is the taller of the two. This is four and this is four and a half. So the four and a half needs to go up and down. Four goes across the bottom. And what I was checking when I was laying them down here is just to make sure there's no interference with the flaps. That they're not overlapping each other and, and they're not. And if they were, um, you're gonna wanna trim off just that little tip, whatever's interfering with a free opening of the flap. Not quite ready. Actually, I'm gonna get some contrast paper out here so I can better see what I'm doing. There we go, much better. There we go, so that's in. Now you can see it. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, same thing, just double checking. If I did one wrong, I wouldn't want to make it worse and do two wrong. Get my contrast sheet. There we go. Beautiful. So now we have one on each side. And so these doors will open left and right. And this is the design feature that's gonna hold them in place. So this is just a large card and it measures 11 inches. 11 inches by seven and seven eighths. And it's just basically narrow enough that it'll fit here. Um, and this is going to slide into this design feature like so. And it's gonna hold um, these two pockets in place. So that's that's kind of the design for that. So that was my thought process. I'm happy with the way that turned out. So I am ready to start laying down some of the designer paper. So let's get started by laying these down. And I did trim each one of these to go with um, one side or the other. So I'm just dry fitting them real quick to make sure I put the right one on the right one and the left one on the left one. And it looks right. So let's get some ink on it and get it laid down. I'm using a powder puff and it's mahogany, in case you're interested. And we have these in our shop. I like uh, several of the colors, but I'm really liking the mahogany a lot. It's very deep, it's very dark, and it works very well with this collection. It's also the same ink I used on uh, Grand Hotel, and I was pretty happy with that result as well. Some of them have kind of a yellow undertone. This is very rich, more like an espresso. Okay. I am going to use this to help me see my edge better. 
so that I can get um, get my border nice and even. Okay, that looks beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and get some glue on it and put it put it down. Hope everybody's having a good day. And before the end of this video series, Nala will make some kind of a guest appearance. Uh, not right now, but at some point I'll get her on camera for you guys. Somebody asked me if they could get a look at her. She's a real sweetheart. <laughs> She's funny. She has definitely got a strong personality. And at the moment, she kind of writes her, writes her own rules. And I'm too much of a softy to stop it. <laughs> okay, so that's in. That looks good. That looks good. Now we're gonna do this side. And I'm just dry fitting again, just to make sure if, if I wanna do any trimming, this is when I would do it. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. There we go. Okay, so there's our doors and our little pockets. So this is going to be the card that slips inside, and this is the paper that I've trimmed out for it. I'm gonna verify this works. Yes, it does. Okay. Now it doesn't have to be this large, but I figured since I had the space, I might as well t make use of it. So I'm gonna ink it and get it glued down. Good. I'm going to set that up here, get it out of the way. Okay, again, I'm placing this on a 11 by 7 and 7 8 inch scored in half card. I'm probably going to do something on the middle. I just don't know what, and I'm not going to do it right at the moment. At this moment, I'll come back when I do my embellishments for the whole album. I may add a, a design feature here, and what I'm thinking of is one of the um, round cut aparts uh, that come with. I don't know if I've got any handy to show you, but um, I have cut apart some of them. There's circles um, that are part of the. Here's one. Yeah. So I may use something like this as a design feature on the middle of this, and it would show, you know, it would still be peeking out of these two side pockets. So I haven't decided. Um, that's probably something I'll do. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now we've got these two doors that need to be covered inside and out. And this centerpiece. This is what I have for the centerpiece, and I have to think about where I put these other papers. So it's going to take me just a second to get everything back where it belongs. This is what I believe I had designed originally for here. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get these inked and, and glued in. And I deliberately did it this way because I didn't want the the hinges that are holding these two things in place to catch everything that I slip inside the pocket. And because this designer paper is gonna now sit on top of that flap, it'll make the um, it adding and pulling out this large card operate very smoothly. The other way would have been to install the, this mat on the door and then put this on top of that. And then, like I said, I think that it doesn't operate quite as smoothly. This is a little more tedious to get in um, 
to get the paper laid down, but in the end, it just makes pulling in and out whatever's in these um, tuck spots so much smoother. So for the person who's going to be enjoying the album once it's finished, it's, it's much easier. All right, so I'm gonna dry fit that one more time and then we're gonna get it glued in. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a contrast because I wanna see this edge. Beautiful, and that looks just perfect. So I'm very thrilled with that. Don't have to trim it. So I'm trying to hold it off the black cardstock as long as possible because it starts sticking as soon as it, it hits it. So try to get it as far in as possible before you have to lay it down. And then the last tricky part is gonna be coming over the um, hinge on the bottom. I'm really happy with that. So one of the things I do to make it a little easier to slide it in is go heavy on the glue on the bottom so that as it's coming in, it's gliding. You don't need that much glue on the top, but it'll help the bottom slide in. All right. contrast sheet so I can see my edges I'm just kind of holding open the flap to get it in there get it 90% in before I start pressing anything down it didn't go in didn't go in far enough there we go Pretty darn good. Oh, you know what? I forgot to ink those edges. Ah, I hate it when I do that. Cause I can see that white edge. It's gonna drive me nuts. So I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap. See if I can't get some of it knocked off. Okay, good enough. It'll have to do. All right, so we're now on to the inside. And I think this is what I want to do. I want to add some color here. Let's make sure these fit. Ink in place. Ink in place. Perfect. 
This one I think I need to turn just a bit. Too close to the um, the gusset, or not the gusset, the the hinge. an issue with it not being square and that was the problem so I'm just shoring it up and now we're ready yeah checking my orientation This is our last piece and it looks like it needs to be trimmed down. Yep. Now I'm just going to make sure these will both open. Yeah and freely without getting in the hinge. I need to ink it and put it down. That's the alternative. Oh, well, I think I got a new side. <laughs> I like this better. It wasn't the plan, but I like it better. husband out of the corner of my eye right outside my window in addition to having that stupid air conditioner um, I have citrus trees which are really quite beautiful he's out there messing around with them look at that I like that <laughs> I'm happy with the way that turned out sometimes I forget because I get things organized and set them aside and I actually forget what I'm doing or what it looked like so that's turning out quite beautiful. And then all this is gonna get held together with this card that's gonna slide right in. And of course it'll be easier to slide when it's attached to a book and not uh, just in my hand. So you see a peek of the, um, the uh, gatefold doors when you, when you push this all the way in. And like I said, you don't have to have a card this large um, it just needs to cover, you know, about half of the door to keep it closed and be able to tuck in both of these. But that was what I decided to do. And then I'm probably going to add some kind of a design feature on the top of this card. It might not be that large, but something just to make this pop out a little bit more. So I'm really happy with that. And as you guys know, if you've done any of my tutorials before, I have four page designs and I use them twice for a four page album. So we'll be building this again with different design paper. But now that we've done it the first time, it's going to go together just beautifully for you guys. So that is uh, page two. So page one, page two, we are on to page three. <laughs>